We're coming to the end of the beginning for the rebooted Tomb Raider series, with Lara Croft set to come out of this as a seasoned response. With Lara Croft set to come out of this as a seasoned, responsible, wise, and caring adventurer and archaeologist, but her path to reaching that status is still fogged by her father's death, Trinity's nefarious schemes across the world, and her own folly. We got to go hands-on with a few hours from the start of the game. The simple fact of the matter is that Lara isn't much of a people person. After so many harrowing incidents in her life, is that really so surprising though? And it means that it falls to Jonah to be the more relatable human face for their adventure early on, whether it's in how he's talked to people in an amiable fashion during the Day of the Dead opener in Mexico, or how he and the character named Abby quite obviously have a bit of a thing for each other when they adventure down to Peru. Lara, on the other hand, has no real idea of how to talk to people, which is really quite funny to see sometimes. It's her absolute driven nature that seems to be putting a real strain to her friendship with Jonah, alongside a bit of tragedy here and there. Again, it's her actions on the Day of the Dead that set off a disastrous flood in Mexico and forced her to confront the consequences of what she's doing. Her obsessive drive to stay one step ahead of Trinity in their various plots is leading her to reckless actions that endanger and even kill others. It's this event that really sets them on the trail of the lost city of Paititi, but it's far from smooth sailing, or flying in this case, and they actually then go and crash in the middle of the jungle. But at the same time, it's fair to say that when disaster strikes is when we find Lara at her best, flying solo and struggling to survive against the elements. She's at home in the wilderness and more than a match for any obstacles that it throws in her way. Those opening moments as she recovers from the plane crash see her dropped right into an impressively thick and difficult to read jungle. It would be easy to get lost here if it wasn't a fairly straightforward path for you to follow, and even when it does open up and have more freedom to explore, it can be tricky to spot all of the natural resources available to you and the path ahead. That said, it's still very much in the vein of what we've seen in the last few games and elsewhere in the third-person adventure genre, having the light white markings on certain ledges, marking the spots where Lara can scramble up a wall or tree, and it means that you don't have to rely too heavily on the survival sense. For those that abhor such a gamey feeling trick, there's new perception plants that you can forage for, and these effectively make Lara hallucinate in a weirdly helpful way. I'm sure that the British government would move to ban these berries as quickly as possible, all of the natural resources, bushes, and animals for a few moments. It's still a gamey trick, but it might be welcome for those working through the more challenging difficulty levels. In a great twist here, you'll actually be able to adjust the combat and the puzzle difficulty separately from one another. Perception plants can also eventually play into when Lara is sneaking around Trinity's goons, highlighting enemies for you on screen, but that's just one new advantage that Lara has. Her main new trick comes straight out of Predator, covering herself in mud and letting her blend seamlessly into the muddy banks and thick tree roots. It's a yet another tool at her disposal, alongside hallucinogenic arrows that turn enemies wild with irrational fear the ability to shoot a tether arrow at an enemy and drag them back up into a tree, which has some particularly brutal and gruesome animations, I must say, and all of her other returning abilities and attacks with a wide range of weapons. With the last two games kept the enemy AI always going for you after the alarm had been raised, here you can actually now hit and run, striking and then breaking their line of sight to blend back into the surroundings. It's not exactly a new concept for video games, but it works really well in this setting, giving Lara an even greater feeling of formidable lethality whilst also managing to emphasize her fragility in combat. You can be overwhelmed, and so breaking away and attacking from another angle could be a pretty good tactic, and some combat encounters can even be avoided entirely, which is really great to hear. Shadow of the Tomb Raider also promises to have grander puzzles and deeper challenge tombs to discover. As in the last two games, some of these will be off the beaten track and more optional, with actually finding the entrance half of the puzzle, but even in the main path there's some pretty imposing challenges to overcome.
The trek to reach Paititi is full of peril in its own right, pitting Lara against a number of towering, moving puzzles and defying drops that would be certain death. While other puzzles have you then interpreting Mayan numbering schemes to input the correct date and avoid a classic Lara falling into a pit of fire death. Eidos Montreal have focused on trying to introduce a little bit of fear into this game, and obviously having plenty of ways to die is going to be part of that. With a handful of hours from the beginning of the game under my belt, Shadow of the Tomb Raider still felt like it was just about getting started, especially since Lara uncovering Paititi signalled the end of the demo, and this is an area that Eidos Montreal have talked about an awful lot. In a lot of ways, that just left me wanting more, though. At its core, this is still the same kind of Tomb Raider that we've come to know since 2013, but it's also evolving. Exploring Paititi and its surrounding areas, learning new techniques atop of her existing ones, and exploiting the hit and fade tactics in combat should add some new layers to what promises to be a pretty dramatic conclusion to this trilogy. Thanks for checking out our video and sticking all the way until the end. We've also got a little bit more of Shadow of the Tomb Raider on this channel, and you can also head over to the sixthaxis.com for this preview and more. Please do like, subscribe, and share before you go, and hopefully we will see you again soon. Goodbye! I still can't... Holy Christ! They're here! Come on, you bastards.